Wow. So at this point, I'm basically just thinning it down. Things will come around if we take this top of it. So we're here at the Boulder Outdoor Survival School, and we're learning primitive skills that can help you in a survival situation. All right, so let's say I don't know anything, right? I, I know I need gear. I don't know what gear I need to get. Where do I start? Mm -hmm. You're in a survival situation, is that true? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, everything starts before that situation actually happens. You need to let people know where you're going. If no one is looking for you, no one is going to find you. So leave a note in your car if you're going on a hike, letting them know where you plan to go and when you plan to be back. Let friends know uh, and know the area, have potentially a map of the area on you. So actually these skills begin before you even leave the house. Okay, so let's say that I'm dumb. I didn't tell anybody where I'm going, right. but I was smart enough to bring some kit with me. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing, and maybe a few more, but primarily one thing that I need to bring, yeah. what do you think that would be? I would say at this point in time, a steel blade is probably the most important thing in one's survival kit if you have access to clean drinking water. Okay, so why do I want a knife as opposed to, I don't know, a canteen? The land offers plentiful resources to allow you to do everything that you would do with modern gear so long as you're able to actually access it. And sometimes plants, bushes, trees need an aiding device like a knife in order to gather and harvest them and use them for purposes like let's say your hot rock boiling inside of some type of container that can't go straight in the fire. Okay, so why would you hot rock boil something in a container? Mm -hmm. Water purification is very important. Whenever you have the opportunity to purify your water, you should, even if you trust that resource. Things like Giardia and Cryptosporidium waterborne illnesses, they usually have an incubation period of around seven to 10 days. And then after that, you can have diarrhea, vomiting, and you end up losing mass amounts of water. So to avoid this, purifying and filtering your water is absolutely important. Now I've got my knife and I don't have a skill set. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I go to Blade HQ, I buy myself a knife. What can I do first? Where should I go first to learn how to make that container to boil water, to learn how to make traps, how to make shelters? Well, you know, I'm gonna back you up a second. Actually, the first thing you need to know is knife safety. I know that it could be a dangerous move to take my knife out of the sheath if my hand is over the blade because it may cut me. So I'm gonna be careful taking my knife out of its sheath. I know that carving towards my femoral artery is going to be a poor decision. So I'm gonna make sure that as I begin to use my knife that I'm taking care of sort of what I call a blood bubble, making sure that my follow through never goes where it's going to hit me. Uh, safety comes first. So if you find yourself hiking in loss or you find yourself in a vehicle that's broken down, how long can you expect before getting rescued? And what are some things that you can maybe prepare ahead of time just in case something like this happens? If you have told someone where you are going, most likely in the United States you will be rescued within 72 hours. If you have not told anyone where you were going, you may simply be missing for a while until someone realizes that you're gone. And I would say a week to two weeks is a little bit more likely. The top items I would want to have in my car or on my person if I were stuck in a survival situation would be a sturdy knife. I would love to have it be a full tang, mid-sized blade up to a small chopper. I would want to have a metal canteen or some other type of water carrying device that I could also use in the fire to boil and purify my water. I personally like to have a five by five foot piece of cloth. Wool is my preference because it wicks well, it doesn't tend to smell after long-term use, and uh, it doesn't catch on fire if an ember comes and hits me. Another great piece of equipment to have is a military poncho. 
They are great to protect you from the rain immediately. Just put them on. They're great for shelter, uh, wind protection, and just like a five by five sheet of cloth, have a lot of uses for hauling materials. So I would definitely want to have a poncho on me. Rope. Rope is awesome. There are a lot of natural materials you can use to make rope, but parachute cord is my favorite thing to take with me. I like to use parachute cord that's around a 555 pound weight because inside of a P-cord there are multiple strands. You can attach each strand together and have a longer piece of rope that still gives you a poundage close to 100 pounds for what most P-cords have inside. Other items I would want to have on me might include a wool sweater and wool socks. Potentially something to cover my head with. We lose a lot of heat through our core and through our head. For rescue stuff, I would love to have a signal mirror on me. Being able to make a fire is critical for a lot of different reasons. Three fires in a row is an SOS signal to anyone in the world. So being able to make fire, having a Bic lighter, Vaseline cotton balls, pitch wood, a bow drill kit or a hand drill kit on me, definitely an item I'd want to have as a fire making item. So I know one issue at nighttime is you get your great roaring fire set up, you fall asleep and you wake up and it's gone. Mm -hmm. What is your solution to that problem? There's not a huge solution to that problem, which is why, as far as staying warm is concerned, it is very helpful to be able to use other insulatory materials versus fire. The coldest point in the night is usually the early morning, and that's the time where we are totally asleep or really could be sleeping and our fire goes out or our hot rocks that we've put underneath us are finally cold. Um, amassing your coals can help protect them and keep your fire going a little bit longer. But the truth of the matter is, if you want a fire to last all night long, you're going to need to continually feed it wood. So you will have to wake up to do so. So once I've got my gear, and so I, I, I put that in my car kit, and I, I find myself lost, I've kind of calmed myself down, figured out where I'm at, now what? Now what do I do? If you know that you're only going to be out there for a week, and you need to take care of yourself. And the area that you are does not provide you with resources to help you maintain your core body temperature or does not provide you with a water source, then you need to go find those things. If you leave the spot where you are last found, you want to leave a trail, just like Hansel and Gretel. It could be pieces of a cloth that are wrapped around trees. It could be making sure that your footprints are very deep and very easy to backtrack upon. It could even be a huge fire, smoke coming out of it uh, that you can see. You go check an area and then come back to that point if you haven't found what you were looking for. Then you go and check another area for those resources and come back to that point. Once you've found what you are looking for, you can then move locations. Um, the resources that you need to pick up relate to thermoregulation and to water locating, right? Hydrating. You need materials that are going to help keep you warm and dry. And finding water is a peril. Uh, dehydration kills very quickly. So how do we locate water when we have no idea where it is? One thing that we can do is try and get to a high spot. The more we can see of the land, the better our chances of, are of either seeing the low points where water runs, even seeing reflection of water is possible from long distances, or just getting a better, better understanding of how the land is moving so that you have a better idea of where water might be. If I see sand for miles, and I see a mountain in the other direction, I'm probably gonna head towards the mountain. I see grasses, I see bigger trees, more likely to have water than the sand, right? Uh, what are animals doing? There may be tracks everywhere, but when you're looking for water, you wanna look for where 
animal tracks are converging, where multiple different species of animals, you find that their prints are coming together into one trail. Most likely that trail is leading towards water. Another thing you can do with that vantage point is look for a change in vegetation. There may be lots of things that are green around you, but you've seen water in no place nearby. If you look for a change in vegetation, things are brighter green, or I see, for example, cottonwoods, some leafy thing following in sort of a river-like pattern, that might be a great indication of water. So that vantage is huge. Get to a high point. Uh, and then look for things that always reside in water, like frogs. If you hear frogs, you should walk towards the frogs, right? Um, other wildlife that tends to be in riparian zones that you know of, if you see any of them, follow them. On that note, almost every creature needs to drink. So if there's animal life around, don't fret. There is water nearby. If you're trapped out in the wilderness for however long, and you take care of your priorities of survival, the truth of the matter is what you need to do is accept that just like our ancestors, it is totally possible to live at peace in the wild. When you are afraid of nature, it is scary. When you learn about it and utilize its resources and they come for you and you accept that the sun rises and the sun sets and you're gonna do just fine. Resistance to your scenario is probably going to kill you. Acceptance, until you can actually get to a point where you enjoy the natural world, will save your life. So what do you mean by maintaining a good or positive mental composure? Mm -hmm. In times of duress, we often have spikes of adrenaline, which can be helpful or hurtful. What I mean by mental composure is the ability to calm oneself and utilize your natural energy that's going to happen in a survival situation in the right way. Panicking, yelling, a lot of anger and frustration, these are not helpful to your success. Sitting down, leaning against a tree, looking at something that you know, like a bird or the sky that you see every day, and calming down is gonna make a better starting point for you to make good decisions.